Okay. Hello. My name is Iago Carvalista. I work as a graphic software engineer at Tarm. Uh, I would like to speak about all of you about mobile, about how you can use ray tracing on mobile. First, I would like to explain exactly what is ray tracing. Ray tracing is an API for ray intersection test. Ray tracing, the API allows the users to defend a ray, setting an origin and a direction, and then test the ray up against the stand geometry. The further behavior of the app is to return the closest bit that this ray will intersect in the steam geometry. The main case of ray tracing is the rendering. Ray tracing allows us to simulate the, light, the behavior of the light in a way that simulates physical reality very closely. However, the Vulkan API for ray tracing is very flexible. You can get really creative. For example, you could use ray tracing to simulate particles colossus in a physics car simulator. However, as I say, the main use case is rendering, and it's what we are going to focus during all our presentation. Traditionally, when you create a path tracing, you have to run thousands of rays per pixel if you want to obtain an image that is not noisy. It's very expensive, and it's not even possible in high-end desktop. Instead, what we prefer is an hybrid approach. We compute the use a raster pass where we compute the geographer normally, and then we'll add solo ray tracing rays from this. This allows us to have a relatively good image with very few pixels, with very few rays per pixel, just three or four. First, I would like to now I would like to practice how ray tracing works with Vulkan. Vulkan uses the same API for ray tracing both on mobile and desktop. This will be very easy to port your ray tracing effects from high-end desktop to mobile. The most important part of Vulkan is the of ray tracing is the federation structure. A federation structure and optimized data structures for fast ray intersection. The other thing that stores the actual geometry of the scene. We have two types of federation structures. First, we have bottom level federation structures containing the actual geometry, and top level federation structures that contain other bottom level federation structures. For ray traversal, Vulkan offers two options. First, we have ray query. I prefer that recommended way of doing ray tracing. Ray query will launch rays in line from all, from all possible sailors. It will make very easy to add ray tracing to our existing effects. Ray tracing pipeline, it's a more driver manager approach. It's more of a, very, of a black box where you have new sailors test to control ray traversing. We recommend you use ray query instead of ray tracing pipeline. The scripture indexing or bandless resource is technically not necessary for ray tracing. You can do all your ray tracing effects without it. However, it will simplify your ray tracing effects very easy, since bandless resources are a very efficient way and easy to implement manner of addressing the material of the intercepted kit. Also, they are pretty available. They are configured for Vulcan since version 1.3. Here, I'm showing you our internal demo that you can see there in the booth after the presentation. You can see how it looks without ray tracing. And now, you can see the huge increase of user quality when we enable ray tracing. We have a lot of different effects of this demo. And as you can see, ray tracing allows us to increase our user quality greatly. This is a small kit map that you can see about the cost of using ray tracing in the steam. Opacity is pretty costly, but nevertheless, we can still obtain more than adequate performance of you see here. Enabling different ray tracing effects has a significant cost. You can see how our frame rate starts, how our rendering time starts to increase at when we enable more effects. However, what is really amazing is that we can still more than adequate performance. Even with requirement of fusion, refraction, shadows, and reflections, when we are launching more than five rays per pixel, we can still obtain more than 50 frames per second. This will greatly depend on your content and your steam geometry. However, we believe that this is pretty representative of the capability of actual devices. We spread most games to just use shadows and reflectives. And as you can see, that can obtain more than 90 frames per second on our current demo. All of this is in an actual device on the market, a VBOX 100, powered by an ARM, an ARM Mali G720 Mortalis GPU. First, I would like to start with a quick overview about all of different ray tracing effects. Let's start with reflections. For reflections, first we'll just sample from the debuffer to reduce the normal, the def, and different one, and different things like that. We use the rotors to compute the number to compute the number of reflections rays that we will launch. We'll see reflections with a faint roughness, we require multiple rays multiple rays. However, for mirror reflections, we only need one single ray. Then, once we generate the ray using physically based rendering data, we can trace it using either ray tracing pipeline or ray query. If we hit something, we just use bindless materials to retrieve the material of the heat and illuminate the heat. If a ray misses, we just sample from environment map and reflect the sky. 
We could actually implement retrocessing in our pipeline. Yes, we learned multiple ways that we fit a reflected of it. Also, if we have lost reflections, we will probably need some kind of extra step to the loss they were sold. Here, we have this thing with authentic kind of reflections. And here, we have record reflections. Now, I would like to speak a bit about screen reflections. This is a non ray tracing technique and what most guests use currently. You can see how screen space reflectors are very, have a lot of different artifacts that you can see in a lot of trends currently in the market. You can see how they have problems with occlusion, where you cannot reflect spirit and things if you are being occluded. How things no longer in the spirit cannot be reflected, and how it's very difficult to optimize. There's a lot of magic numbers and difficult things that you have to adjust in with in screen space reflectors. Record reflectors fix all of that. There is to implement because you can use just physical this rendering and it just works. Now I will speak about shadows. Shadows work similar, very similar in our, in our demo to reflect. We just amplify the buffer. We generate some rain using physical this rendering data and we trace the rain. If we hit something, it means that we're in shadow. However, if a red fills, it means that we're illuminated. There's two important optimizations in our shadow pipeline. First, we can skip most of our red tracing rays just checking if we're facing the light. This is very easy to use to use in the dot product. Second, for reflections, we need to find the closest gate that we're intercepting. However, for red shadows, we only need to know if we're intercepting something, not the soft triangle that we're intercepting. We can offer different flags to stop the rate reversing at the first thing, which can greatly increase the performance. Now I'm showing this thing without sound. Up here, we are using ray tracing sound. You can clearly see how much ray tracing shadows help us to run this thing and how much the visual quality increases. Here, we are showing our thing just using shadows. This gives you an idea of how shadows are actually adding to the steam. Now I will start with refractors. Refractors are also very similar to reflectors. We sample from the G buffer, we generate a ray, and we tracing with the ray query or ray tracing pipeline. When we press in this ray, we need to ignore back face triangles. Because the uh, because we are actually because we're actually going inside the geometry. Also, refractors need actually multiple kits. We recommend using at least two, one for the fixed kit and one for when we see the reflected object. But for a realistic of but for a realistic result, I would recommend to use at least four to be able to have to reflect something like a glass. Sim uh, finally, similar to reflections, refractions also need to access, use painless materials to retrieve, the, to retrieve the material of the kit object. Here, we have the thing without refractions. And here, we have refractions. I think that refractions are the best use of red, of red tracing. So you can see how much detail it adds to this thing. And this is almost impossible to simulate without using actual ray tracing. Wait. Here, I would like to explain about some advanced topics that about ray tracing that you can link on developer program. First, we have skin animations. Skin animations are very expensive, so we recommend to minimize the number of skin mess. This is because you will need to rebuild the bottom level of the structure. We also have opacity. Opacity will not require to access use painless materials to fed that fest, uh, the alpha tester during ray traversa. These are very expensive, so we recommend you only use opacity if it's actually necessary. Okay. Another an interesting way of optimizing ray tracing is to combine it with screen space with, with the screen space. You can start just launching a screen space ray and use the switch to launch a ray tracing ray. This allows us to skip a lot of waste and also launch the ray from the end of the screen space, saving a lot of man, a lot of triangle, in, triangle checks. Now, another interesting option is to combine very ray setting with ray tracing. You can, learn, race, you can use a lower rate in certain parts of the steam. This will allow you to increase your resolution and your performance with, a sacri with sacrificing visual quality. If you want to learn more about ray tracing, please link to your previous Vulcanist presentation, where we went about the basis of the API and we were explaining all the advanced techniques that I mentioned just now. Finally, I will here link rest to check our developer program. We have a lot of interesting research about ray tracing and other topics. And thank you. And as I say, we have a really interesting demo in the booth that I would encourage all of you to check.